as well as in front of the headquarters of the United Nations. Because over the past two months, 20,000 Palestinians in Gaza and in the West Bank, I reiterate, and in the West Bank, have been mercilessly murdered by the Zionist settler colonial entities diaper army known as the IDF. Almost 8,000 of our martyrs are children. Almost 7,000 of our martyrs are women. And the rest are fighting or combat aged people or men like myself who are considered legitimate targets. We are here today because our heroes on the ground, such as Mu'taz Azaiza and the hero who always brings joy to our hearts when we open up her videos and she starts by, I'm Bitan from Gaza, I'm still alive. In addition to all the other heroes, the journalists, the resistance, who have called upon us to come out and to escalate, to mobilize, to increase the pressure on all the decision makers and all the embassies and all the NGOs that have a voice that can put an end to the merciless bombardment of Gaza and the merciless killing of Palestinians in the West Bank. On Saturday, there was a United Nations draft resolution forwarded by the United Arab Emirates calling for a ceasefire. The resolution was backed by 90 countries. And in addition to that, the United Nations Security Council, which is made up of five permanent members and ten non-permanent rotating members. The five permanent members have something called veto power. That veto power allows them to strike down any resolution that a single one of them doesn't like despite everybody else agreeing or voting for it. Yeah. This past Saturday, a new war criminal, a Colin Powell wannabe, whose name is David Woods, shamelessly raised his hand, declaring yet another veto, and that is a big shame. A resolution calling for a permanent, or a ceasefire, not a permanent, a ceasefire on Gaza. Shame. 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 But for those who have been following and for those who read history, this wasn't a first for the United States. Out of tens of resolutions condemning Israel, the United States has always vetoed one after another, and I'm just gonna list a few for you. 1970, Resolution 271, condemning Israel's annexation of East Jerusalem, vetoed by the United States. Yay! 1971, Security Council Resolution 298, demanding Israel withdrawal from occupied territories vetoed by the United States. Shame! 1972, Security Resolution 317, condemning Israeli attacks on Lebanon, vetoed by the United States. Shame! 1973, Security Resolution 322, condemning Israeli raids on Entebbe, vetoed by the United States. Shame! 
1979, Security Resolution 446, condemning Israeli settlements in occupied territories vetoed by the United States. Yay! 1981, and I'm skipping some of them, by the way. Security Resolution 471, calling for Israeli withdrawal from the Golan Heights in Syria, vetoed by the United States. Yay! To elaborate further on the dark history of the United St of the United Nations and the United States, but specifically on the United Nations, the second ever Prime Minister of the Zionist settler colonial entity, Moshe Sharet, declared on a televised event, and I quote, Israel is the child of the United Nations and it is determined to remain loyal to its parent body. It's going to base the whole policy upon loyalty to the United Nations. But it's up to the United Nations to be loyal to its child. You can see that the United Nations is right here in New York, in the United States of America. A permanent member of the Security Council who wields the veto power and has time after another used it to protect its colony in the Middle East, aka Israel. And as American citizens, we pay U.S. tax dollars to fund the genocide of our Palestinian sisters and brothers. So when we come outside, we're not doing nobody a favor. We have a moral obligation to come out day in and day out to scream. I want you all to repeat after me. Money and might don't make you right. Money and might don't make you right. For liberation we will fight. For 